G'day and welcome back to Torment Thursdays. Uh, so, for a little bit of context, uh, last time we went through this really neat choose your own adventure style uh, thing where we journeyed to the mind of a dead general and ate all of his knowledge. Uh, I think it was kind of weird. Um, and then I attempted to record this session and everything broke because there'd been a patch. Uh, so I don't think there have been any changes to my character over the last version of him, but this is the peril of recording something uh, that is in beta. Things change, things break, and you just kind of deal with it. So, uh, we've literally just finished that scene and come out of the jar. And a kaleidoscope of colors drags you back from the welter of memories. That memory is more powerful than the others, but it's faded. Your personality reasserts your, itself, and you stand in the strange laboratory once more. The specter beams as you approach. That was great. Did you see that? Scattered them. What the happened tank? to me in that tank? I don't know. What was that? All I saw was you put your hand on it and then blast those sorrow fragments to the stars. But it's your mind, right? It was probably some mental connection like the creatures in those tanks that memory i had felt a lot more real than what happened with the creatures did it i don't know what to tell you didn't look like anything happened out here surge of energy that drove away the sorrow fragments was that something i did it was that's one of the things attuning does the tides keep you alive maybe you can't control them all the time but they can change things around you I wouldn't be surprised if it worked that way in the real world, too. A white grin plasters itself well, across his face. for one thing, so that's a bonus. The tides keep your body together, sucking energy in so you can heal. You can push that energy out, too, like you did with the sorrow fragments just now. There's five tides. Your nature, like your choices with the creatures, determines which ones you're most attuned to. Like, you're most attuned to blue, which is about wisdom, logic, and insight. The kind of person who wants understanding and enlightenment. But that's just how you are right now. The tides are always moving, and you can change. I mean, you're going to be who you're going to be, right? Those creatures that were here, can you tell me more about them? That was the sorrow. Or pieces of it, anyway. You can imagine how terrible the real thing is. His smile has disappeared. I don't remember much. Maybe you know more than me. But the sorrow is what threw you to the ground and nearly killed you. It's still after us. It'll always be after us. Unless you can stop it. But we got you a tune, right? We can do this too. Together. I have a plan. Can you tell me anything else about the sorrow? Just that it's old. Really old. And it doesn't pay much attention to laws. I mean, space-time laws, not human <laughs> ones. Well, I bet it ignores those too. This sucking creature. Um, let's see if he... We're in your mind, while your body's in the real world, putting itself back together. You can change things here. Already have, actually. Okay, so nothing new there. What's First, your plan? you need to get back to your body. When you wiped out those sorrow fragments, a tear opened in space just over there. Fair bet that it's your way back. Okay. Second, you need to find something called a resonance chamber. I don't know everything about it, but I remember what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to stop the sorrow once and for all. Fair enough. It'll look a lot like the tank you used to attune yourself, a, a glass sarcophagus. Except in the oh, real world, a it's inside a crystal right. dome somewhere with five mechanical arms around it and a metal ring set in the floor. I'm sure you can't miss it. Use it like you used this one, and we should be fine. This, these look like jars to me. Like a fancy urn. Honestly. Alright. Good luck. But I can see sarcophagus. Oh, here's our rift. Ah, okay. So right. Uh, I guess some of that would have chosen what kind of uh of what kind of character class effectively uh that that I was meant to pick, but it's just like, yeah, type selection's not been implemented yet, so pick it here. Uh, so, let's see the types. Uh, yeah, your type is what your character does. In 
Numenera, there are three. There's a glaive who is basically a fighter. Um, it like there is some further specialization as to what kind of fighter you want to be, but they're the ones that get more direct combat powers. Then there's your nano that uh, are basically your wizard or cleric, right? They're they're the spellcaster. Um, we're talking about a big science fantasy world. Uh, and there really is no distinction between what a nano is and what a wizard is. It's all nano machines and uh, parallel dimensions and stuff. Um, but it you basically cast magic. And the jack is a bit of both. They're kind of more likely to be your rogue types. Um, but yeah, what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to go for a nano here. Mostly because I have a, I suspect when I do my own final playthrough is I will be a uh, jack. So here we go. Nano. You're now a nano, a master of the Numenera of the past. You're ready to return to your body. Well, that's fine. Sure. Zero, zero, zero. I don't... I will, clearly things are loading at the moment. The game is not the most responsive and great at showing these ah okay cool so yeah here is a tier increase so we get to move things around we get to add um to our stats i'm actually going to boost might a little bit uh speed a little bit and then intellect a lot uh we also get to pick a skill so we can find out more about machines natural or mystical things. I'm going to go with machinery. So, yeah. Machines. And we get to pick abilities. So, we can try... So, uh, only available during crisis basically says, hey, this is only something you can use in a combat. A scant thought seems like something I totally want. Um, and... Let's see if we do... I'm going to just do the two ones that can be used outside of combat. There's also Tidal Surge. This is new and interesting. Um, decreases difficulty on attacks and defense and plus 100 damage and... Okay. So that seems pretty decent. Plus 100 damage, and all damage dealt is re uh, all damage taken is reduced. And okay, this seems like a ridiculously powerful ability. Um, I suspect there are limitations beyond just you also damage all of your companions. Um, but okay, sure. And the effort on defense basically allows you to gain defense. But, um, make... Yeah, just gain defense at the cost of speed. Gotcha. Um, anything else? These are our skills. We've got quick fingers, we've got stealth. Skills are just trained and kind of mastered or not present. We've got deception. So we're a slick nano, but we don't have the last thing. Um, I wonder if there will be another one and we can change Ah, oh, we can change class and descriptor here as well so this is basically like a midpoint except if I click that button uh, it stops responding for the moment ah yeah so we can do that and change descriptor allows us to actually swap things around so we picked slick which as shown here drops might um, makes us less trained in endurance and might defense, but gives us all of these other bits and pieces, which seems really quite useful. The other one that I was trying to get was charming. Drops intellect and just gives us a smaller number of bonuses to other skills, but slick seems slick seems pretty decent. And confirm. Yep, sure. Okay. So let's get going. This is where we landed, I think.
Okay. Where did he fall from? His body smashed to talc. It's a wonder he's still breathing. All I saw was the corona, not his origin point. But look, he's healing already. Spontaneous regeneration. Will you look at... Wait, I know that face. Ugh, what was that? What did you do, Calistage? His tones become accusatory, suspicious. You open your eyes. The first thing you notice is this man's kaleidoscope of tattoos writhing across his forearms. He wears a long, dark coat belted at the waist, supplies filling the pockets. His boots are worn, stained with years of travel. You blame me? He emitted an internal physiological reaction to the in response to the fall, probably related to that fantastic healing process. Obviously, Alligan. The voice rolls and hisses, and you have to rub your eyes to be sure that you're not seeing double. Faint echoes of her actions trail from her, each nearly mimicking her, though some act and react to stimuli you can't perceive. Her vivid hair and outrageous clothing remain constant throughout these shadows. Oh yes, it's obvious, Calistage. His voice is grim and clipped. He sees you looking at him. You're no ordinary model. We know that much. Start talking. Scan thoughts. He's a change. He's the changing god. Calistage is deliberately blinding herself. But why? I am so glad I took scan thoughts. Um, I'm no ordinary model. What do you mean? You really don't know. Tucks his head to the side. I'm starting to think you're not him. Starting to think, Elegant? Tell me, is it a novel experience? Gant thoughts. <laughs> Elegant's being more paranoid than usual. How long must I put up with him? It's his, it's his face. I've never seen other people rebuild themselves like that. Only the changing god could have healed so quickly. Ah, <sighs> Maybe you could help me for a change? What, you know, what this means to me? You're familiar with the word changing, Alagon. That implies inconstancy. Thus, the changing god may well have changed. Several versions of her shrug and she addresses you. You'll have to forgive him. He, be he believes you're someone he once knew, even though it's painfully obvious to anyone you're newly born. If I'm not mistaken, you're what we call a cast-off. The changing god created you. Body and mind. Your sire used your body for a time, then abandoned it for reasons of his own. When his mind departed for a new experience, you were born in his cast-off shell. It's the changing god. Ha! Ah, that's something coming from you. The changing god is your sire, dear. He discovered a path to immortality long ago. It means to transfer him his self to a new body of his own creation. I don't think he knew, however, that when he abandoned one body, another mind would burst to fill the void. Certainly. <laughs> oh, he knew all right. The only thing the changing god cares about is, 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 uh, is, is, uh, is himself. He doesn't give a single thought for those he leaves behind. Certainly knew the consequences of what he asked me to do. Oh, man. I am so glad I have scan thoughts. Um, let's go with other other castoffs. Dozens, hundreds. Who can say? Your sire has been doing this for several centuries. So if all of them were born the way you claim to have been, it's a wonder any of them survive. Yup. So. You say I was born when the changing god left, but why am I not dead? Think about it. You're the kind of person who can make your body into anything you want. What do you want to do? If you construct bodies for centuries, you want to make each one better than the last. You want to be live forever. You're not going to let your life end by accident. No, you'll make strong bodies. Fast. Powerful. Maybe throw in some regeneration while you're at it. The changing god has always been vain. He rarely stays long enough in a shell that doesn't suit his self-image. He looks you up and down, a smile suddenly unnerving. Perhaps the changing bud fled, eh, perhaps the changing god fled because he didn't want to wear those scars of yours. The changing god abandoned my body. Where is he now? If, if he abandoned your body, then his consciousness fled to another. He eyes you keenly. Oh, do stop. Look, he gives, she gives Alec again 
is equally piercing, amplified by the withering gaze of her sisters. If there's one thing we know about the changing god, dear, it's that he always has a contingency. This child was born here. The object of your obsession will have been reborn somewhere else. Uh, what? What was that last when I woke? As I was telling my colleague, it was obviously a physiological reaction of some kind. I've never witnessed the birth of a cast off. But yes, it could very well have been caused by a nascent consciousness. Don't worry. I don't believe it caused any real harm. Not to me, at least. Really? You've been more abrasive ever since we came here. She just can't empathize with other people unless she's experimenting on them. Um, let's go with, do you know anything about the tides? I've heard that term before. A subject your sire has studied in great depth. I'm afraid it isn't my field of inquiry. And let's go with this last one. How can you be sure the body is a cast off? I mean, aside from your miraculous reformation, one thing, there's your tattoo. All cast offs have one, though its purpose is beyond me. Then, of course, there's your delicious naivete. It could be faking it. You don't live hundreds of years without learning to lie convincingly. Oh, for... <sighs> what do you think? Are you a newborn child, or are you a powerful immortal whom death has robbed of his memories? This... <laughs> Elegant crosses his arms and growls. Fine, what do you think? This should be interesting. Interesting that I can't react to any of these things. Um, you obviously knew the change you got, Elegon. What do you think? Am I him? It's just the kind of question he would ask. He scrutinizes you in a way he hadn't before. You carry yourself with the same arrogance, the glint of knowing everything about our world and the worlds before it. Your personality, that's very much the same. If you're not him, you're his god's damn spitting image. <laughs> You'll have a lot to answer for, from a lot of people. People like me. And what are you basing that conclusion on, Ali? Your feelings? Gods, you're so rancid sometimes. Yeah. stage. Okay, done. Um, let's go with then... Uh, before I woke, I was in some kind of lab with a glowing spectre. With how hard you hit the ground, I'm surprised that's all you saw. Uh, why do you seem to hate the changing god so much? His face is calm, but his voice is bitter and tight. You should know, shouldn't you? You've ruined lives, committed crimes, and now it seems you've forgotten the harms you've engineered. You've left a trail of the dead and dying behind you. Calistage and her echoes share an expression that's equal parts amused and appalled. Is not the changing god elegant? If falling from the sky didn't kill me, is there anything that can? Falling faster from the sky for one? An excellent question. Having seen your regrowth abilities in action, I suspect they're primarily physical, a regrowth. If that's the case, you'd be unable to survive most varieties of psychic or molecular dis decomposition, disintegration, conflagration, and so forth. Degenerative diseases could pose a problem, and I know of several entities capable of psychic destruction. Uh, <laughs> as, as she speaks, a vision flashes into your mind. It's not yours exactly, but you, somehow you know this is a memory of the changing gods. You're in a dark room lit by a myriad of blinking lights and holograms from the many machines surrounding you. What about a body that can withstand the sorrow's attacks? There's a voice. Seems to be coming from one of the machines. No, you reply. The thing has no respect for bar barriers of any kind. Physical, temporal, psychic. This is the only way. With a series of gestures, you bring up a crystalline pod. If the resonance chamber works, it'll give us the power to stop the Soros hunt for once and for all. We just need the right focal point. A catalyst. The memory fades. Kelsey is still talking. You realize that the device you saw in the memory is identical to the one behind you now. It looks like the spectre had described it. A transparent sarcophagus inside a crystalline dome with mechanical arms arrayed around it on a metal ring. Fortunately, the dome is shattered, the sarcophagus is cracked, and one of the arms is in pieces on the floor. Whatever its function, it clearly needs repair. 
of flesh-eating viruses, one presumed defigurement by the iron wind, would likewise be devastating enough to... I think he gets a point, Calistage. Either of you know how to fix that crystal chamber back there? Elegant chuckles, then with, with the... Then Furman certainly says, not likely. Though it might not be possible. You need people with the appropriate knowledge. I'm sure the cult of the changing god will hold the answer. Calistage's distaste is evident in the expression of her echoes. The, the face of the one in the lead remains carefully impassive. The insane to help a newborn. And sorry, you'd turn to the insane to help a newborn. Where's your judgment, Alligan? I'd take him to the Order of Truth. The Order of Truth? Are you mad? It's going to take us apart. What's the Order of Truth? Knowledge seekers. The learned who... Tr oh, whoops, wrong person. Knowledge seekers. The learned who try to wrest secrets from the hearts of the prior worlds. They gather in the city to exchange their findings. Help humanity to a brighter future. He smiles brightly. Our friend Elegon here was once one of them. Broads, quack salvers, and charlatans. I don't have all the answers. I would not trust them with the changing god's secrets. You're just angry they couldn't help you with yours. Echoes tinkle laughter. But I'm being too cruel, dear Elegon. Let's take our new friend to the... What's the cult of the changing god? Despite what she says, they're not insane. They're eccentrics. She laughs, but he soldiers up. They're worshippers of, well... Of you and your sire, the changing god. They devote their lives to understanding your kind. Um, let's go with the changing god. A wise choice. Your worshippers aren't likely to cut you apart, and they're sometimes fools, but they collect knowledge and data. They'll tell you more than you can know about whoever you are, and give you good counsel. Good counsel. The best counsel is to come with me. I'll accompany the two of you. When you change your mind, you'll need an introduction to the Order of Truth. Fine. We'll both go. When Calistage leaves you in a bro broken in a ditch with your purse empty, while she laughs it off as a good experiment. Suspicious as always, Elegant. Child, the world is an exciting place, but full of dangers. Rest assured... One of us will get you to safety, where, safely to where you need to be. I'll be right behind you. Sunny smile crosses her faces. Shudder to think what Elegon might do to the child. Why do you want to go with me? What's in it for you? Well, I won't deny that you're an exciting find. But it's not about that. I just want to see you safely out of the reef. Who knows what secrets this child could help me find. If I can help him live long enough. Kid, you're not safe here. Just because you knew even Cal has enough pieces of heart to let you choose your own way up in the city. But there are those who troll the reef. Scavengers who'd sell you for parts if they knew where you came from. What you were. If he's not the changing god, he needs my help. And if he is... Alright, let's go. And now we leave conversation mode behind and start looking at things. Okay, a mechanical, a, a mechanical arm lies on the floor, presumably broken during the f your fall. Sparks pour from the arm's shattered housing, filling the air with a greasy stench. Let's look at the housing. Sharply pointed apparatus that formed the top, that formerly topped the device, appears burnt out and useless. The equipment in the base remains somewhat, at least somewhat operational, as a constant stream of sizzling motes can attest. Let's attempt to salvage what we can from the housing. Uh, this is a routine check. I literally cannot use effort. Routine means that it's zero. I cannot fail this check. Mind you, I also can't critically succeed. Success! You take and get a work around the sparks. You manage to extract an unbroken component from the housing's interior. You don't see anything else of value inside the demolished machine. So we gained an item standstill. Sunlight falls through the ragged hole in the roof onto the shattered resonance chamber. It's hard to believe that you did this, that you plummeted through the curve of the pale blue sky and crashed through the dome and broke this delicate machine with your own body. It's still hard to believe that you're alive. 
Four mechanical arms hang over the center of the device, above the cracked, semi-transparent crystal of the sarcophagus. The fifth lies broken in the floor amongst the scattered synth and crystal shards. A metal ring surrounds the array, dented and broken by your impact crater. Let's have a look at the sarcophagus. The padded interior beneath the coffin's cracked lid looks like it was made for a human body. Despite the damage, you don't see any way to open it and get inside. You glance between the sarcophagus and the needle-like protrusions at the end of the arms above, uh, and it seems likely that using this chamber would not be a pleasant experience. And the arms? Cables run from the machines along the dome's wall to the base of the suspended arms, each of which is capped with long needles aimed at the cracked, coffin-like chamber at the center of the platform. Gem-like lights flicker dimly at the base of the arms. Have a look at the ring. You feel the slightest hint of resistance every time you cross the ring. Now you're paying attention to it. You know that the, your breath is echoing in your ears as though you were inside a glass dome. When you step outside the ring, the feeling passes. The ring exists to uh, you kneel to inspect a broken section and take note of the field projectors inside. They are omnidirectional. The ring exists to protect anyone standing inside it, but also to contain tremendous amounts of power. And let's have a look at the shards. Jagged fragments of crystal are intermingled with the synth in the dome above. The crystal shards glitter in the light like captive suns. Let's grab one of those pieces. The room of the crater you find a silver crystal, a sliver of crystal. Sharp as a dagger on one end and smooth on the other. It might make a usable, if somewhat crude, weapon. And let's step away from the device. Oh wait, actually, let's look for other useful shards. Nope, nothing useful. Cool. Though that might be the case, let's see, anything else that we can interact with there? There's a tab button, yes. Yes. So that will help. Yeah, let's focus on what we can look around at. Basically, yep, and the only other thing to interact with in this room is the computer. A sleek black, unimpressive device hunkers before you. As you reach out to touch it, the triangle of lights on its casing blazes into light, and an image unfolds in your mind. A towering crystal arch rises over a jagged grey landscape. The air is dead and stifling, and there, at its emerald peak, the image collapses, leaving you staring into the device's triangular array of lights. Command me, the device or the intelligence within says, each word Kelly etched with distaste. Who are you? Your command was not understood. The intelligence says with clear satisfaction, sounding for all the world like it understood the question but is choosing not to answer. Command me. What was that arch you showed me? Your command was not understood. The intelligence chuckles, its light pulsing. What commands do you recognize? Three lights hum throb irritably, heated air sighs from the vents, and then a towering list of commands races through your mind, far too fast to read. You rub your eyes, groaning, and the intelligence chortles. Command me. Them on the outside of the device. An indignant hum rises from the intelligence engines as you examine its ancient casing. Uh, a much newer mechanism on the device's side appears to be giving this intelligence its vocabulary, forcing it to speak with you. The original device's creator may not have meant for it to communicate at all. Show me that list of commands again. Slower, please. If anything, the list pours through your mind even faster than before. Command me. Show me the, that arch again. The mental image unfolds once more. You see a huge crystalline arch on a jagged field. The arch is divided into rectangular cells, all of which are numbered. They appear to be transparent and empty, except the arch's pinnacle. One cell is lit in a brilliant, pulsating emerald. The number zero is printed on its side. Let's try to remember more details about this strange place. This is a easy test, which we failed. I rolled a 1 or a 2 on a d20 then. Damn it! 
to scan the arc and the landscape and for a moment almost grasp the memory and hear a dry voice speaking a command the buzzing hum of the engine's intelligence engine uh, proves too distracting it, the memory's gone you'll have to pry the memory from the device's grasp some other way let's examine the wasteland and close the image of the eye show it again we get the same thing dang it wait 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 no no okay Number zero. Fine, fine. Okay. Ah, here we go. Though the list was mostly a blur, one particular command, unleash, seems to be highlighted in the emerald. The same emerald of cell zero. At the top of the arch in the dark field. Unleash the content of cell zero. Cell zero will now be unleashed. Sorry, the device's light flicker with incandescent shock, then focus on you, flickering. Cell Zero will now be unleashed, the intelligence spits. Please be advised that the object you're about to receive is completely safe. Use no caution whatsoever. The strange contents of Cell Zero materialize before you. Warning, all cells are now vacant, shuttering Lugumvo. The lights, the intelligence's lights wink out, one by one. Gained three XP, gained item, Shatterstar. Interesting that a carved that a cast off can command the changing god's machines. Crosses his arm across his chest. How do you do that? Kelsey rolls her eyes and looks to you. He'll never stop gnawing on this bone. Uh, you know, the truth is wasted on him. Though I admit curiosity, how did you do that? Maybe you're right. Maybe I am the changing god. I knew it! Bearing a savage triumphant glint at Kelsey, she knows her eyes but says nothing. Crackle. Um. Yo. Oh. Cool. So, I'm guessing there's nothing else that that will do now. Yep, it just says crackle. Let's leave and wander outside. out into the reef kind of fun how it's like you need to find the resonance chamber and you it's like no no we don't need to find the resonance chamber we landed on the resonance chamber we need to fix what our big fat body did to the resonance chamber Two floating cones whirl and spin deliriously around each other, giggling like children being tickled. The air around them smells of sweet, burning leaves. What are you? Cones continue whirling and laughing like enraptured dancers, giving no sign that they've heard you. Watch them for patterns. The longer you stare at these artifacts, the more you convince that they turn faster when their spiraling paths cross each other. What are you for? Jones greet your question with a split second of hushed silence, followed by the light appeals of helpless giggling. They aren't for anything. They're from one of the worlds before this one. Sometimes a Numenera will do something useful. Sometimes they'll turn you inside out. And sometimes they don't do a damn thing that makes any sense. I've often said the same thing about you, darling. Elsage murmurs. Uh, let's try touching one. We... Yep, we can totally do that. Success. You managed to graze one of them with the tip of your finger. Ron, says a voice, and your vision is stolen from you. A moon hangs over you, but it's not the one you recognize. It's black and in a pearl-white sky. Thick, flat asteroids orbit it like petals in the wind. Your questing tendrils at your ankle and the hot wind of in on your face... Smells of scorched hair and grief. Your vision returns. The cones hang motionless for a second before resuming their giggling dance. And we cannot talk to them again. Got 2 XP though. Ah, right. Let's just talk to them. Gotcha. Um. Tap, that's what I want.
A tangled cluster of metallic tendrils grows from the depths of the nearby water. Strangely, they resemble clawed alien hands, most of which have seven or eight fingers. Examine them. The hands sway softly, but their movements are difficult to follow. Watching them for too long makes you feel nauseous. Apart from the hands themselves, you don't see anything interesting in the cluster. Let's try and uh, break off one of them hands. So it's either hard, uh, which is 1d12, or we can spend effort, which is spending literally half of our might pool to get minus 3 and basically take our chances from uh, 7, 7, 8 in 10, in 20 to uh, 11 in 20. So, you know, I'm going to do this. Oh yeah, critical success. So that um, basically means that we got, um, we got a 19 or a 20. Uh, stats spent on effort restored. You grip the hand nearest you and snap it from its roots. Stepping back, you give it a couple of experimental swings. Good balance. Might make a decent weapon. Gained item, eight-fingered mace. You aren't happy unless you're breaking things, are you? Then the cluster again. Try pulling another hand. Nope. Okay. Let's have a look at our inventory, which is going to take a few seconds to load. Alright, there we go. So, we've got a crystalline shard, which basically um, we're trained with, so it's not a bad thing. But there's this, which has better damage. So it's a better weapon. Also got standstill here, which allows us to uh, basically shock someone into immobility. And we have the title capacitor still. So we still have the item we got in our own mind. Interesting. I didn't expect that to last. That's pretty neat. Okay. Let's have a look at this. A matte black obelisk floats in the midair above the water. It's sharp curved sides that converge to a glowing tip. The brightens are dims with the passing of the bay's faint breezes. Be not to touch the obelisk. Raise your hand towards the obelisk. A dull green light wells from within the black stone, fixed on you like a furious eye. I knew someone that did what you're about to do. I am priest. Beam came out of the top of that thing and ripped his face off. Made a fancy nightlight out of a crystal necklace, though. But hey, I'm sure you know what you're doing. Oh, hush. At least that poor priest died in service of his curiosity, rather than stumbling about the coast, complaining and feeling sorry for himself. Go ahead if you must, but do be careful. Let's put the uh, crystal shard out towards the obelisk. Carefully, you level a shard at the obelisk. A superheated beam lances from the tip of the structure into the crystal, sending vibrations up your arm and suffusing the shard with a warm green glow. Um, and then I think we will leave the obelisk alone. Let's see what that did to the shard. So that made it do more damage and gave it a bonus. It's, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Like, as far as weapons go, admittedly, I'm going to try and literally talk my way out of any instances of things, but, you know. A bubbling mass of sludge floats in the surface of the water. Every once in a while, an oily nodule separates from it and hurdles into the sky. Uh, we catch momentary glimpses of a muck-coated object in a putrid mass. Let's have a look at it. Carefully, you lean closer to the heaving mass. After a moment's study, you notice the globules rising into the sky always contain something, be it a shiny core of untainted seawater or a tiny fish. Blow up machinery. The currents within the sludge move in a repeating pattern that suggests a mechanical function rather than organic life. Let's try and retrieve the object trapped in the sludge. Uh, and we're going to use our speed. 
Success! The next time sunlight strikes the object's streaked surface, you're ready. You snatch it from the oily mass and clean it as best you can. Gained item? Ecstasy glass. Not really sure whether that awful muck is harmless or you're immensely lucky. Either way, do go on poking things, dear. It's quite entertaining. Let's have a look for more objects. Um, you spot no other mysterious objects in the bubbling mass. Wait for more treasure. Wait for more treasure. See nothing but muck and more muck. Wait for more treasure. Cypher sickness, minor. <laughs> yes. At last, your patience is rewarded when an unusual object bubbles to the surface. Before it can sink out of sight, you snatch it up again. Gained 2 XP and gained um, the time step bloodstone. You've found a veritable filstone trove. Well done, dear. Okay, I'm going to stop now. So, basically, there is a limit to how many ciphers you can safely carry. My limit is evidently three. But, uh, yeah, so this is like a heal item. And this is a free recovery roll. Um, and so I will try and use one fairly early on in whatever the next fight is. Uh, okay. So, what do we have now? So this is an intake... This is strange lines and sunken buildings. Like, this is very much, it's a rift. It's meant to be a mishmash of different things. Uh, this is the black goop. And I do like the way you've got this, obviously, like, this is some kind of space looking craft or building. Um, this is some kind of ship. They're all pretty different. Uh, but I think exploring this area should wait until next time next thursday until then have a great day bye